Alright guys, welcome back. Let's get this ball bounce animation finished. So, if you've been sticking with this exercise so far, what we've got is a ball that starts in the air, bounces down, has a few bounces, it's got squash and stretch, it's got a nice weighty look to it. So far so good, but to add a little bit more realism, we're going to try and move this from one side of the screen to the other, have a little bounce and then roll to a nice stop. So we're going to put that all in place. Right, now... What I'm going to do is I'm going to select this controller here, which is the one that's controlling the position of the ball. And what I want to do is add another layer of animation to it. Now, there are different ways I could go about this, but my personal favorite, which I found quite neat, is to put it into a group and then animate the group. And what that means is that I'm putting animation onto something clean. So it's kind of like a, an, an empty vessel that I can put keyframes into. So I'm going to select this controller, I'm going to hit Ctrl and G on my keyboard, and I'm just going to call this um, Movement Group, just so that I can find it in my outliner if I ever need to. And what that will allow me to do, you can see there are no keyframes on here now, but I can move the ball side to side, kind of on a fresh timeline, which is um, how I prefer to work. So. Let's get this uh, animation set up. So, I'm going to go back into my side view. Uh, and I want the ball to start currently where it is. So on frame one, I'm going to press S. And then, a little bit later, let's just expand the timeline a little bit. Let's go to about frame 30. Mm, I want it to be in the air, actually. About frame 33. I'm going to move the ball... I've gone about 12 units to uh, the right. And then I'm going to set that keyframe. And then I'm going to bounce it back. So I'm going to go, I think in this case, to about frame 60. So well after it stopped bouncing, so it gives it time to roll. I'm going to move it back, not all of the way, to about there. So now I'm about four units away from where I started. Okay, so that's the base of the movement. Let's have a look how that is looking. Okay, not bad, but it's picking up and losing speed at the wrong times. And that again, as it was with the bouncing, is down to the way that the curves are working in the graph editor. So, let's sort that out. So, I'm going to go uh, Window, Animation Editor's Graph Editor. I'm then going to just scale this bad boy up a little bit. Go on, Chief, get bigger. Get bigger! And then I'm going to press A. Okay, so this is the, the problem. When it hits the wall, which is here... It's this keyframe. Um, the line should be straight because it's hitting a solid surface. So I'm going to select this keyframe and make the li linear tangents there. I'm also going to make this one linear too because I want it to start off at constant speed. And then I just want to uh, come to a more gradual halt than it currently is doing. So I'm going to select this keyframe here again. I'm going to break my tangents. Break those bad boys. And then I'm just going to smooth the curve out like that. Now, as you can see, that's had a bit of a weird effect because now it's going to bounce off the wall faster um, than it originally came off the wall. So what I'm going to do is select this keyframe, hold shift on my keyboard, and then with my middle mouse button, I'm just going to drag and then... that will allow me to just come to a more gradual stop and match the speed that I had before. Okay, so hopefully that's going to look how I want it to look. So let's um, rewind that and have a look. That's not bad. It is still bouncing off the wall a little quicker than I would perhaps have liked it to. But overall, I'm fairly happy with it. Um... I think I'm just going to remove this keyframe because I don't know what it's doing. And then just check that again. Yeah, so I just think on this keyframe, I'm just going to move it back a bit. And I'm going to reset that and see what we get. Yeah, and we've got a nice little rollback animation as well. So, the reason we get that rollback animation is a happy accident and it's because 
my curve has gone past the, the original spot. But that's kind of what you're looking for in a ball bounce animation anyway. So, we're basically finished. The one last thing I'm going to do, you can follow me in this step if you want to, or not. I'm just going to put in um, a bit of geometry so that it looks like the ball's bouncing off it. So I'm just going to create a cube and move it over here. And then I'm going to scale it up. And it's just going to kind of represent a wall. There we go. I just need to now go into this view because it's not going to be thick enough in this direction. There we go. And then I'm just going to put it into edge mode. Select this bottom edge. I'm going to press Control and E to extrude it. Then I'm going to go straight into my move tool. I'm going to pull that edge along just to make a bit of a floor. And put it back into object mode. Okay, and now it'll look like it bounces off a wall. Hooray! Amazing. So, if you want to preview this without the controllers on, you just go to Show, and then you deselect NURBS Curves. And then choose an angle you like the look of. I just want to make sure that it is connecting with the wall. It isn't quite, so I'm just going to reposition that. That's pretty nice. And there we go, a ball bounce animation. So hopefully that has given you everything you need to know. It's a very sort of basic introduction to character animation. So it introduces timing, it introduces squash and stretch, it introduces giving weight to a character, in this case a ball. And it also covers uh, some useful tools in Maya, such as the graph editor. So that brings this exercise to an end. Make sure that you subscribe if you want more exercises like this one. And please like this video and any of the other steps that have helped you out. If you've got any questions or you need any help, then you can either email me or you can drop a comment below the video. And the final thing I'd like to do in this video is thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.